on with the adventures of Coyote and Rodeo. We're going to start chapter 15 today. All right, so here's what I learned about Esperanza and Salvador Vega. They were pilgrims on a quest, just like me and Rodeo. Salvador didn't seem to like talking about family stuff too much, so it was tough prying details out of him. They left their home in Orlando a few days before. His mom and his aunt had worked together, but they both lost their jobs somehow. His aunt knew someone who said she might be able to get them both jobs in some little town outside of St. Louis, Missouri. She had left a few days before them and they followed her once they'd gotten everything figured out and packed up their stuff. His aunt had told them to just head north toward St. Louis and she'd work out the details on the job and let them know where she was. But then their car had broken down at the same time that his aunt had mysteriously stopped answering her phone. That's when me and my watermelon slushy entered the story. How'd they lose their jobs, I asked. None of your business, Salvador said after a second. He didn't say it all rude or mean or anything, but there was a definite don't push it edge to his voice. So I shrugged and rolled with it. Fair enough, I said. So you really have no idea where you're going? It was about an hour after Rodeo and Lester had swooped back and picked us all up. The bus was dark lit only by the drifting headlights of other cars on the highway. Ivan was sitting on the couch between me and Salvador and we were taking turns petting him. Salvador shrugged. Well, we don't not know where we're going. We're going to St. Louis, kind of, Missouri at least. You don't know where you're going? I repeated, raising my eyebrows. Missouri is a big state, man. My aunt's gonna tell us where to go, Salvador muttered, scowling. Her friend's cousin had some connection at a hotel or something, but she didn't know exactly where, that's all. She's gonna call and tell us once she finds out and then we'll go there. That's it, no problem. All right, all right, I said, putting up my hands and surrender. No problem here. Rodeo and I haven't known where we're going for like five years, so I got no room to judge. At least you're heading somewhere, theoretically, anyway. Salvador had his backpack sitting next to him and an ID tag hanging off one of the straps caught my eye. It said, property of Salvador Peterson. Why does that say Peterson, I asked. Isn't your last name Vega? Salvador's jaw clenched. Peterson is my dad's last name. He said the word dad like it was a curse word. I don't go by that anymore. Oh, how come? Salvador chewed on his upper lip, his eyes narrowed, his nostrils were flared. I wasn't an idiot. I'd had enough experience with no goes to know I would just bumped into one. Never mind, I said quick. None of my business, right? Right. He looked up toward the front of the bus and pointed at the driver's seat with his chin. So why do you call him Rodeo? Why don't you call him dad? Because that's what he wants to be called. Okay, but he is your dad, right? Shh, I said, dropping my voice to a hush. Keep it down, he'll hear you. Salvador's eyebrows lowered. Who cares? I do. He gets upset, it's hard for him. The look of confusion on Salvador's face was clear as day, even in a dark bus. All right, yes, he's got another name he don't use, and no, I don't ever call him dad, and both those things have the same reason behind them. I took a second, thinking how best to explain. Life's a tricky tangle to unwind sometimes, and rodeo's a heck of a knot to throw into it. So I used to have two sisters and a mom. Used to? Yeah, they died like five years ago. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Salvador's mouth drop open, but I kept on talking, saving him from having to try and say anything thoughtful and sympathetic. It was real tough on Rodeo. Darn near killed him. I think he was, he was, uh, my words left me for a minute, remembering how Rodeo had been back then, back after it happened, how everything had been. I shook my head. 
going back there in my head wouldn't do any good. Once he kind of got his feet back under him, he couldn't stand to stay there where we lived. Too many memories, I guess. So we sold the house and all our stuff and bought this bus and we've been on the road ever since. No looking back, one big adventure. I tried to put plenty of pep in my voice at the end, but somehow it came out wrong and flat like a weak old balloon. So I propped it up with a smile, showing my teeth in the headlight glare. Salvador was just looking at me all serious. It's good, I reassured him. What happened, happened. There ain't no need for us to dwell in all that sadness. So we don't talk about it or them, and then we don't have to be sad. And then rodeo can be okay. That's my job. It's good. There was quiet then between Salvador and the road and Ivan and the night and me. Salvador broke the quiet, but he broke it gently with a voice that was low, like a warm mug in cold hands. But why don't you call him dad then? It's all part of that no looking back deal. You see, if I call him dad, it just reminds him of them, I mean, my sisters, and he doesn't like that. So when we hit the road, we left all that dad stuff behind, picked ourselves new names, he became rodeo, I became coyote. We did it all legal and everything. Changed our last name too to something that showed our new lives. Sunrise, a fresh start. Wait, so your actual name is Coyote Sunrise. I grinned, yep. And your dad's name is Rodeo Sunrise. I pursed my lips and nodded. Huh. Uh, Salvador said doubtfully, then shrugged. Hmm, kind of fits, actually, but how do you pay for the stuff? I mean, if your dad's not, like, working or whatever. Money is not a problem. There was a settlement because of the accidents. I mean, we got money from the company whose truck, well, whose truck caused the accident. We sat in quiet for a while, a few minutes even, and then Salvador broke the silence with another question. What were their names? Whose? Your sister's. I looked up at him, saw his eyes waiting. He had nice eyes, Salvador did, quiet eyes. I know it's weird to call eyes quiet since I've never seen a loud eyeball, but it's the truth. Salvador's eyes were quiet and something about that quietness kind of gave you the courage to talk to them. I glanced toward the front, making sure Rodeo wasn't listening. I had a feeling like when you're holding something too hot in your hands and you've got to set it down. I leaned forward so my mouth was so close to Salvador's ear that I could smell his deodorant. It had kind of a distracting pine tree smell to it. Ava, I whispered, and Rose. Their names were like candy in my mouth for just a second. Sure, it turned sour soon enough, but for a few breaths, the sweetness made it hard for me to talk. I leaned back into my own spot. Those are pretty names, Salvador said, and I just nodded. Then he asked, what's your real name? The one you had before. I opened my mouth, snapped it shut, then opened it again. Salvador just waited calmly, which was actually kind of infuriating. I worked real hard to smile at him, and when I answered him, my voice was as light as anything. None of your business, I said. He smiled back a little, smiled at how I'd used his own words against him, but it wasn't much of a smile. Mm, fair enough, he said, and I gave him the same smile back. He shook his head. Man, we're a mess. Who, I asked. All of us, he said with a little laugh. Me and my mom are heading off to somewhere we don't even know for a job we aren't even sure exists. And you and your dad are doing whatever this is, driving around and like pretending that. We're not pretending anything, I cut in, my voice cold. And we're not a mess. We're okay. Rodeo and me, better than okay. Better than anybody. We're solid, solid as the Rockies. Doubt was drawn all across Salvador's face. Whatever, what do you call this? He gestured around us at the bus. We call it, we call it 
living, freedom. We call it taking care of each other and moving forward. Salvador stared at me, his face still unconvinced, his eyes still maddeningly quiet. It works for us, I said. Does it, he asked. I mean, maybe it works for him, but does it work for you, Coyote? He said my name the way people do when they curl their fingers in the air like sarcastic quotation marks. He said my name like it was a joke, like a punchline, like an elbow to the ribs. My throat hurt, my stomach churned. I am not a mess, I am not a joke, I am not fragile, I am not broken. I stood up, bent down and picked up Ivan, a limp body and a weak squeak, his only protest at being disturbed mid-nap. I'm going to bed, I said to anyone who happened to be listening. Then I walked back with my cats and I pulled the curtain to my room, closed behind me, and I slept just fine. Thank you. We end that chapter. Tell me in um, the comments, the private comments, why they changed their names.